Yeah, that's right. Now, can you tell me some limitations of React? Like, what do you think React is missing, or what are the limitations of it? So, uh, React is not a framework; it's a library, right? And it right. does not come with any hard and fast rules to do things. Like, you can do it any ways. Like, you can call API wherever you want. You don't have to follow mm. a structure. For uh, on the contrary, for example, we have Angular. So that is a framework that will bring its own rules that define the services mm -hmm. here, call the services in this way only. But React does not bring anything like that. So this is one advantage of React as well. It is very easy to learn and people right. can understand easily. But uh, it's also a disadvantage. Why? Because uh, like people come and do things randomly. They don't follow code mm -hmm. practices. And at the end of the day, like uh, when uh, six months or eight months pass, so the project will be very messy because there is no particular guidelines we are following. We are just doing whatever, like people are doing whatever they want. They are not following a okay. proper architecture. So I, I think mm. React does not bring architecture with it. It's just a library. Mm. And that's a disadvantage uh, with React. No, okay. no so hard infrastructure. Let's say, mm, so let's say key, a company is there, think, think in terms of a company. So I am currently a startup, but I know that for sure I'm going to go big in the next five years. So should I choose React as my framework? Yeah, React can be choosed. Like I will also uh, like uh, recommend them to use some kind of a production framework. So now, as of now, React is uh, React team itself uh, tells to use Next.js. Now Next.js mm. will bring their own uh, like uh, architect. Next Next.js is the framework and mm -hmm. it brings uh, its own rules. So use React and Next.js both if you want to have a very scalable uh, option or mm -hmm. like in five years you want to do a big thing or either use Angular, okay. Angular can, you can also use, but that also depends. Like Angular is not that much in demand. So you won't be getting many developers to work like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that in, in that terms also we have to think. Okay, great, great. Now my next question will be, uh, can you tell me the difference between controlled and uncontrolled components in React? So uh, basically control and uncontrolled components depend upon the uh, how this the values of these things are changing. For example, if I have an input tag okay, and I'm not doing anything, like I'm not uh, controlling the value of this using mm -hmm. the value attribute with a state. For example, if I'm typing, I'm not using any kind of a state to control this value. So then that thing is an uncontrolled component. We are not changing it. It's just the UI we are typing. And right. other thing can be, uh, there is a form and all the particular values, right? Like the name, the email address, all are controlled. Like whenever you mm -hmm. are typing, we are changing that state. And that particular thing is getting reflected in the input box. Because, why? Because we have uh, used values mm -hmm. because of that particular state. So that is a control correct, correct, correct. controlled by us. Otherwise, it, it can be uncontrolled, controlled by the DOM, we can see. Like the natural okay, state, great. without a value. So, Got it. Now, uh, my another question will be, key. can you tell me a few ways that you can optimize the React app performance? Some few techniques through which you can optimize. Yeah. So basically, uh, like first technique which works uh, like very much is using react.memo everywhere. Mm -hmm. So react.memo is just kind of a, a pure component. We can say in uh, class components, we have some pure component. Basically what it does is mm -hmm. it will compare the props and state and if the props and state are uh, like like before our render, whatever the props and state mm -hmm. are there, and after the render, whatever props and state are there, if both the things are same, right, it won't re-render the component because uh, it does not need, right, as the props are not changing. Like the state. Right. So first thing is using React.memo everywhere. In every, every export, we should use React.memo. Next is like uh, in every uh, function, uh, we can use use callback and use memo. So uh, what happens is when we have a function, right? It's kind of, it's an object, and uh, even if the function is same, so I'm using React dot memory to optimize the performance. Mm -hmm. Or uh, like we will be doing a comparison between the props and the states. But now mm -hmm. if I'm passing a function in the props, and this function are objects, and uh, what happens in the JavaScript is two objects cannot be same like. Uh, if, until and unless the memory address of these objects are same, right? They won't be considered mm -hmm. same, even if they are same, right? Like if I have a function, right. do three, which do three steps, another function which do the exact three steps, but still mm -hmm. JavaScript won't 
say that these two are same it checks for the memory reference of this object right. so to keep them that memory reference same we can use use callback for functions and ob for objects and arrays we can use use map so now this memory reference will be same so whenever there will be a comparison right in props mm -hmm. that will uh, like pass like that will be true that correct, will be correct. After, before render and after render both are same uh, otherwise what will happen is the memory references are different and even if we are using react.memo that won't make difference because mm -hmm. uh, like what i explained right uh, objects are not same only it correct, is correct uh, on behalf of memory address so this is uh, like using use callback use memo and react.memo other thing is using some frameworks like nextjs what i said earlier those thing uh, those yes. uh, frameworks brings uh, like many things like code splitting lazy loading on its own maybe a framework like gatsby if you don't need need the whole nextjs bundle mm -hmm. you can bring uh, gatsby it's lightweight okay yeah that will be enough yeah am i audible can now can you repeat my mic off uh, am i audible now yeah yes you are audible. okay great so right now i want to give you a particular situation okay i want you to tell me like how do you handle it let's say ki you have a page okay you have to build this thing you have a page you have a button there when you click a button click on the button below that button a pop up should appear like a modal okay a pop up should appear now you have to close that modal if you click outside the modal and if you click outside the button so if you click anywhere except the button and modal that modal should close okay so how do you handle this situation like how do you first open the model and how do you close it you can use so, react javascript whatever you want yeah. for opening the model we can have uh, some kind of state like when we click on button right. that state will change and this uh, particular thing will show on the screen now correct on close right uh, like where, whenever we so basically in uh, yes. react we do have models and uh, yes. on those models we have uh, overlay right which is behind the yes. scene sometimes let's say ki my my that model component is very complex and i have to develop it custom so i i am not using any framework or let's say ki i am not using bootstrap or anything like that i have built the model custom and i want to close it through myself only like i have to write some code to close it then how do you handle it yeah so what i will do is uh, like in this case what i will do is just trying to mimic that overlay thing right so uh, mm -hmm. what happens in react bootstrap is we have a model we have a overlay also mm -hmm. sometimes we make mm -hmm. it visible a little dark uh, kind of thing or Correct. sometimes it's not visible what uh, we can do is we can also make him uh, like uh, what what do you say over overlay so what will mm -hmm. happen is whenever someone clicks outside right the clip will mm -hmm. be on overlay because it is uh, like on top of all the elements so basically mm -hmm. what happens is we have various elements right on the dom stacked together so what i will mm -hmm. do is i will create a overlay which is at the top like which which has the highest z index z z index index so, mm -hmm. yeah, z index so this uh, overlay just below the uh, model so whenever someone clicks outside uh, and i will make this uh, view like uh, the color and uh, the uh, like opacity of this overlay is uh, like uh, such that it won't be visible but let's say ki if you make the acha okay so let's you are saying ki let's say if i uh, create on close button let's say if i create click on anywhere except the button and the model so you will have a overlay on top of everything so the z index will be highest and now when you click on that overlay you will change your state to let's say off false correct, correct. okay yeah. cool yeah mm hmm cool cool so my last question will be have you used error boundaries in your any project in your the react project that you are making in your company or personal project have you used error boundaries there yeah error boundaries uh, like uh, i have used and uh, what we have done is like um, keeping a error boundary for the whole application so if some app, if the application fails due to a certain reason mm -hmm. then uh, like uh, error boundary will have a what do you say like a backup ui and it will show mm -hmm. us uh, Uh, a backup ui if the api fails right then uh, mm -hmm. we'll show that it's not available as of now something went wrong some error uh, like message like that change the ui completely unmount the app and uh, like mount the error boundary so it's a it's a class component right. error boundaries don't cannot have functional components and uh, it have uh, two functions i guess 
component uh, did catch and uh, one more i don't remember as of now so using that okay. we can show the backup ui and we can also have the loggers like uh, there's one more function in error boundary which helps us uh, to log the error like what is the error coming so we will be able Correct. to know the issue okay okay got it so shubham you have quite a good experience in terms of like uh, front end development so can you tell me some cases like where you faced an uh, let's say a challenge during your work in your uh, company or anywhere make, while making a personal projects like what challenges did you faced while creating any let's say any component or project any major challenge that you have faced till now and how do you solve it so uh, first challenge uh, that i have faced that was very difficult for me is we had a very complex form right uh and mm -hmm. so first we built it for uh, like actually the requirement change so first we built it for a particular scenario we have a very big complex form we have built it now uh, what the requirement was to make it generalized so that particular form will be used throughout the site wherever that particular information is required so for example okay. we have a form in which we are uh, entering all the details of that particular uh, eye glass so my first company is a e-commerce store right and that uh, they mm -hmm. they were selling eye glasses so like the okay. left power the right power frames and all the details like right? it's, it's a very big form so now Correct. the challenge was to separate the ui layer and the logic layer business logic layer why because uh, mm -hmm. like now we have to show this ui somewhere else as well and whatever business logic we have written it for the first time right sometimes it is not the same as well so if i am showing that particular form in account my account then uh, different things will happen uh, it won't have like uh, the same logic so separating mm -hmm. those two things right business logic and the component layer that is kind of a challenging uh, task for me and uh, i did it uh, like for the first time as well and from that mm -hmm. from there i have learned a lot of things and now when i write code i you know, like from the starting onwards i make the layers different using hooks and all mm -hmm. using custom hooks i always separate the business logic and the component um, like the view layer so that it is always right. reusable not like uh, nested everything together so it will be uh, like difficult to reuse so that is first thing second is uh, like uh, there is there is one uh, like feature like end to end feature which i have mm -hmm. developed in which uh, we save these prescriptions into the like firebase and mm -hmm. the firebase and then this yeah. uh, uh, prescription also have a reminder so when this reminder comes right so you set this reminder for 6 months after 6 months so after 6 okay. months it will also send a mail to you so in that uh, case we have used send it and uh, all the integration i have done on my own so that was kind of a challenging mm -hmm. experience because it was new and it was for the first time i was working fully for, uh, like from front end to back end right so that was the challenging experience for okay okay that's good and one last question i wanted to ask ki let's say ki if you are facing any challenge and you are not able to solve it let's say one day or two days you are not able to solve it so how do you cope up with that like how do you find solutions which you are not able to solve let's say you have googled it and everything you have done it but you are not able to solve it so what do you do at that time yeah so uh, like first thing what i will do is uh, like maybe some senior i will uh, ask mm. for help and uh, and like With with him also, I will discuss what are the progress I made, mm -hmm. like uh, what whatever re research I have done on it, and how we can do it in some way, which is kind of a hack, if, if we have to implement mm -hmm. it or not not implement it in that way. And even if uh, like the senior says that he no, it is not not at all possible, then I will be uh, mm -hmm. like, communicating the same with all the knowledge to our product manager, so that uh, like there will be a very uh, like clarity. of what we can achieve things are always achievable but it all it always comes as at a price like we can do something but that will uh, mm -hmm. increase the performance or that, that will increase the load time of the application by a huge margin or maybe by 5 to 10 seconds so that is, that will create Got a very it. large impact on the user set so those kind of uh, things must be taken up by the business so how they want and uh, in that way yeah okay. mm -hmm. If there is any situation like that we handle example for example in uh, in our one app right uh, there was mm -hmm. uh, i have i've been given a task to align the whole app like to align everything okay. in the app right now the problem is 
not the time time is a constraint like i have uh, it, it okay. takes a lot of time to align everything mm-hmm. but the constraint is even if i do everything right uh, mm-hmm. by the design it was such a complex design 